explore the peak of mystery. Reach the unreachable. The cosmic powerhouse of the planet. Life-changing insights. Breathtaking landscapes. Mind-blowing sacred truths. Karmic cleansing and beyond. Mystical journey to Mount Kailash with living enlightened master Paramahamsa Nityananda. For thousands of years, yatras have been an intrinsic part of the Vedic tradition, where the yatri goes on a pilgrimage to holy places such as Rishikesh, Kashi, Kedranath. Badrina, and the holy Mount Kailash. Today, we will take you on a yatra to remote Tibet. A yatra with an enlightened master who inspires us all to live an enlightened life. Paramahamsa Nityananda is a young enlightened master from southern India. He is world-renowned for his remarkable teachings and his ability to transform, heal, and awaken Kundalini, the highest potential energy hidden in each of us. We are now headed off to the most sacred mountain in the world with him, a trip to Mount Kailash and enlightened consciousness. We meet in Kathmandu. Our start point, busy, deeply spiritual, and welcoming to explorers. Every moment of contact with Nityananda is an opportunity to fall in tune with his consciousness of constant joy and spontaneity. Journeying through Nepal towards Pokhara, located on the beautiful Trishuli River surrounded by high mountains, we discover a temple several thousands of feet on a mountaintop and set out to visit it. Walking around the Manokamna temple exhilarating, the views gorgeous. Manokamna Temple is also well known for helping fulfill the wishes of devotees who visit the temple. Satsangs in the mornings followed by trips in the beautiful valley, well known for its close-up view of the Himalayas, the Annapurna Range. Pagoda Temple. Gupteshwar Temple, located in an underground cave. Gupteshwar Temple in Pokhara, Nepal and uh, this temple is unique because it's right underground as you will see you will come along with me we'll get into a, I, I guess it's a narrow tunnel kind of a thing and let's see I don't know this is the first visit of mine here so I'm also pretty excited come along
close to the Mahadev temple in Bhuteshwar and you can see to my right there is the bhajan happening. I think, I guess it's the local uh, folk music with bhajan, a prayer offered to Lord Shiva. So let's come along and see what it is. Devi Falls Next stop, Pashupatinath Temple. Here, Swamiji gets straight to the point about life and death. And shares a very special series of techniques for developing enlightened consciousness. In Hindu tradition, it is believed that if a dead body is cremated at a sacred place, the soul is liberated from suffering and moves on to higher consciousness. The temple in Kathmandu is considered to be one of the most sacred places on the planet after Kashi. To be cremated and the cremation grounds are alive with activity. Swamiji arrives to introduce us to an ancient ritual that helps both the group and the souls departing that day. With great love and care, he blesses the energized deities. In the Hindu pantheon of gods, each god is believed to have lived on earth and to have taken on the task of uplifting humanity to higher consciousness. In Swamiji's transcendent world, these deities are his companions, alive and working, blessing everyone with their enlightened presence. There is only the beauty of the present moment. Time stands still. What is it like to be traveling with an enlightened being, where every moment is a deep spiritual process? Words fail to express the experience. It's time to leave Nepal and drive towards China.
We are on our way to Kailash. Like Swamiji said, the planned part of the trip is over. Now starts the unplanned part of the trip. So it's been a wonderful time so far um, in Nepal. But now as we uh, begin our journey towards Kailash, actually, I would just today's morning Swamiji's satsang message on Kailash, the idea of the, the concept of Shivoham. Uh, he said the energy of Kailash, something that that you expect, expected to be Shiva, right? As opposed to being subservient to Shiva. That was, in my opinion, one of a, of a very strong message. And he initiated all of us into us into being Shiva himself. So that was the highlight of today, and I think it's been a highlight of my trip so far because the message, the, the way he delivered, really changed the entire trip. The, the mode in which I was till that point of time, I had some low moods and stuff like that to that point of time and Swamiji's message today morning pretty much blew them away and I really can't wait to watch be Shiva myself and be in his presence at Kailash. Arriving at the border, chaos reigns. We squeeze and jostle and wait. Then we are suddenly free and in China. into Toyota Land Cruisers and begin the three-day journey up onto the crest of the Himalayas and onto the Tibetan Plateau. This is Paul. I'm uh, 27 years old, around New York, USA. Now I'm about 29 years old because of the two years of my life I just added from yesterday's journey up to 12,000 feet. But we made it through the night. Um, I was basically wrapped in maybe like five, six layers of clothing, uh, down sleeping bag, a hat, a hood, and then a goose blanket over the sleeping bag. 
to stay warm. It gets freezing here. As we travel, we witness a land designed to produce enlightenment, where the unexpected happens constantly, where the gods are in control. The landscape is absolutely gorgeous. We kind of see kind of uh, patches of green with a lot of desert-like landscape at the background. The clouds and the sky is beautiful. And overall, we've kind of taken uh, a small break, a restroom break out here. And what we see is the entire caravan of cars behind us. It's really, really beautiful. And the weather is absolutely gorgeous, just the way Swamiji said. He said it's going to be a great trip. And he said, I'm going to make the weather really nice. And what was a kind of a wet and a cold, clammy weather has kind of turned out to be bright and sunny. So I don't think anything better could be here. We're waiting, looking forward for that dip in Manasarovar. where the vastness of the open space invites the flowering of a vast inner space. Mount Kailash is considered to be sacred by the Buddhist, Hindu, Jain, Sikh, and Bon religions who regard it as sacred that even to glimpse Kailash once in one's lifetime is to gain liberation. To reach Kailash is no easy thing. Over the Himalayan mountains, defying weather and tough landscapes to a hidden Shangri-La, a sacred landscape of mountains and lakes. Arriving at the sacred lake of Manasarovar, with Mount Kailash about 30 miles away, low clouds are hiding the final 8,000 feet of the peak. Locals say it has been this way for three weeks and there is no chance of cloud cover clearing. But Swamiji says, by Lord Shiva's grace, we will see the peak. We wait with bated breath. Swamiji seems to be in sacred communion with the gods asking that the clouds clear. Slowly, the clouds begin to rise. The peak is clear, and we all bow down to acknowledge the extraordinary phenomenon. We are now staying at the foot of a sacred monastery from where we can view both the lake and the mountain. For centuries, monks have lived here meditating and seeking enlightenment. Lake Manasarovar is one of the holiest freshwater lakes personifying purity, lies 15,060 feet above sea level covering 320 square kilometers. It is believed that when the ashes of a departed one are immersed in the lake, the soul attains liberation. Now we enter the sacred valley on the east side of Kailash. We stop at the place where the great Buddhist teacher who introduced Buddhism to Tibet passed away 
and his body was disposed of through a remarkable ceremony, where the body is offered to the eagles in what is called sky burial. The imposing east face of Kailash appears. Its very presence puts us into meditation. We sit with Swamiji and fall into meditation again. Land of mysticism, culture dedicated to spiritual awakening, evolving traditions of Buddhism and Hinduism, Traveling with an enlightened master is always an exciting adventure. It was August 8th, 2012, around 4 p.m. Responding to devotees who want to experience the snow in Kailash, Swamiji blessed that there would be a snow shower as a sign that the cosmos is celebrating with us. Namaste. whole Kailash is celebrating and blessing all you guys it will shower in snow today as a blessing to the world it was not the season for snow but as we crossed the China border on August 10th 2012 2 p.m. Snowflakes danced their way down to the earth, joyful, celebrating, and announcing to the world the presence of the enlightened master. This is a rainy season, but uh, no snowy, it's uh, amazing. Okay. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> you can tell it's American. So, uh, yesterday after puja, Samiji was said, uh, tomorrow will be uh, snowing. No, it's coming sure, it's coming too, it's snowing. Okay. <laughs> So what did we learn from being with an enlightened master on an epic journey? That the full experience of being human can only be experienced when we realize that living an enlightened life is possible. That we are very fortunate to have traveled with the living enlightened master to inspire, to guide, and to share the joys of enlightened living. That a visit to Kailash can change us deeply and forever. That every life experience we have is designed to lead us to enlightenment. Swami, so me, Kailash. It's been a fabulous trip, great food. Health was great, Swami took care of practically everything. Oh, I can't believe that one can be so simple and open and make every moment magic. I'm really, really uh, glad that I decided to do it, that I had uh, Swamiji's blessings to come here and be here and, ex and have this extra extraordinary experiences on this trip. It was beautifully taken care of us. The, the Satyam tour, the Sherpas, and uh, everyone else who organized this trip. So there's, there's one key takeaway that I can that I got from this trip, apart from whatever Swamiji gave, was the way the entire trip has been organized. Right, every small minute detail was taken care of, and everybody was really taken care of on a personal basis, and we had really friendly people uh, to talk to, very approachable people. So in a trip like th that we did to Kailash which is which has so many variables and unknowns in terms of weather, food and altitude and things like that. The way the entire trip has been was organized was a lesson in itself as to how complicated things can be achieved if few dedicated people got their heads and minds and hands together. Right. That was something that I really was um, very appreciative of and uh, learned a lot from. Being a Kailash Swamiji that just magnified the whole experience exponentially. That Swamiji just facilitated having that experience and we spent all day out there under Mount Kailash and just being 
in Swamiji's presence. It's a beautiful thing. And the emotions just naturally come up. And just, it was just so powerful. At the end of two extraordinary weeks, we carry home with us the unspeakable experience of a journey of many lifetimes. Haribo, Haribo.